Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to my WWE 2K GM mode in All Elite Wrestling. That is right, we are yet again back for another episode of this series and we are marching down the road towards All Out and the finale of the AW GM mode, at least season one anyway. But before we get there, we've got to go to another pay-per-view known as Fight for the Fallen. And of course, if you've been paying attention, the next episode of this series, episode 10, will be the Fight for the Fallen pay-per-view, which instead of taking place on a Saturday as it normally would in AEW, it's going to be kind of like a weekly special kind of thing. Like it'll be an episode of Dynamite, but it'll be Fight for the Fallen if that makes sense. You know, kind of like AEW did with Beach Break a couple months ago. It'll be kind of like that. It'll be like an extravaganza episode of AEW Dynamite. And I mean, I've got to say, the card for that event is certainly shaping up to be an absolute banger. I mean, you've got Moxley versus Omega in a 30-minute Iron Man match for the AEW World title. You've got Hikaru Shida versus Awesome Kong the first time ever. You've got the Battle of the Frog Splash, as I'm calling it, the quarterfinals of the AEW Combine, Rob Van Dam against Leo Rush. And of course, if you watched last episode, tragically, the vacated Tag Team Championships after the Jurassic Express were attacked by the GOD, we of course now have a triple threat ladder match to determine new tag team champions as well. And so long story short, what I'm trying to say, Fight for the Fallen is definitely going to be one of those pay-per-views that you don't want to miss. But of course, as you know the drill at the beginning of every AW Gym Mode episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the current budget after last episode, see what the views were, see what the likes were, and see how much extra money we can spend in today's episode. And so after last episode, we left off with $49,000, but last episode ended up getting over the 1,000 views threshold, which means that's a plus $30,000, and over 150 likes, which means that's plus $25,000 as well, leaving our new current budget budget at $104,000. And you guys already know DDJ is a man of the independent wrestler and so with the two uh, members of the AEW Combine that will be competing in the quarterfinals here tonight, JY and Trevor Ray, they of course are both going to be paid a $5,000 fee for competing here on Dynamite, which means that's minus $10,000 for them altogether and uh, we can minus that from the current budget. In addition to losing $10,000 on the AEW Combine, we're also going to go ahead and spend $7,500 on B Priestley. And we're actually going to go ahead and buy three women on today's intro because we're not done with this women's division just yet. Yet, we're gonna spend another five thousand dollars on the librarian lever bait and really I feel like it was only a matter of time before I bought the librarian lever baits I mean we had pretty Peter Ravalon over here doing his thing ruining everything really just being the most boring I mean terrific wrestler I have ever seen one of my favorites actually now moving on to the next woman I'll be buying in this AW GM mode intro for $20,000, the native beast, Nyla Rose. And the final person that I'm going to be buying in this intro before we wrap things up and I move you on to the actual show here in AW Dynamite, this one I am very excited about because we finally have an Eddie Kingston mod available on 2kmods.com. I was waiting for it before I would buy him in this series and I'm happy to announce we now have the Trons, we now have the theme, we now have the guy. It is time. And so for $20,000, welcome to AW Dynamite, Eddie Kingston. And so that about does it for the spending in today's AW GM mode intro, but uh, we've got three new additions to the roster today, ladies and gentlemen. You heard me right. There are three new members joining the Bible roster here in the AW GM mode, and I am very, very excited about one of them in particular. Because if you've been keeping up with AEW recently, you may know that there's been a couple of uh, ex WWE superstars that have been showing up, and so naturally they've got to uh, you know show up in this series. It's the AEW Gym mode after all. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bible rosters: Christian Cage for fifty thousand dollars, Paul White for fifty thousand dollars, and Brian Pillman Jr., who isn't necessarily an ex WWE guy, but for five thousand dollars, he is also being added to the roster now that the mod is available. And so, yeah, some very big additions right there. I'm very excited to go ahead and buy. Christian Cage when I have enough money and so if you want to see Christian Cage in a uh, future episode before I end season one then go ahead and share this video around share this series around because the more views and ratings I get of course then the more money I can spend and the more likely you'll be able to see Christian Cage very soon but, uh, yeah that about wraps it up for an explosive intro here on this AWG mode episode hope you guys are excited to see the future editions of the roster in this series and so without further ado I present to you another episode of my AW Dynamite Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of AW Dynamite here where we're kicking things off with the cowboy himself, Hangman Adam Page. And as we begin things here tonight in AEW, it is going to be a singles rematch between the Cowboy Hangman Adam Page and of course freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, a rematch from 8 nights ago on AEW Dark. 
And now speaking of freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy, here he comes now. A crowd favourite in his own right in Orange Cassidy. And of course, one third of the best friends faction here in AEW, but for Orange Cassidy, he, he challenged Hangman and Page in one of the most uh, unorthodox ways that we saw this past uh, week on Dynamite. Hangman was being interviewed by Renee Paquette talking about the future uh, here in AEW and you know where he's going to go next. And Orange Cassidy just waltzes on out here and says, you guy rides horses? I want a singles rematch. Okay, let's do it next week. And that's how we're here. And not a great start off the bat for Orange Cassidy, catching a big boot from Hangman and Page and a headbutt as well. He certainly got the size advantage, does Hangman. But really, in AEW, it's not about how big you are, it's about the size of your heart, it's about the size of the warrior within. And Orange Cassidy certainly has all the heart of a warrior. Nice uh, hurricane water right there to kick things off. But Hangman and Page back up to his feet now, going for those kicks. But a oh, nice kick there. Heel kick, spinning heel kick by Orange Cassidy. Now, what's he going for? Oh, nice counter there by Hangman and Page in the early going of this matchup and just throwing Orange Cassidy to the side of the apron. Aubrey Edwards is continuing her count right there on a count of five but Orange Cassidy of course resetting the count and getting both men back in the ring right now. And again another count there by Hangman and Page. It was a great back and forth counter a uh, bit of a counter fest between these two men. Both very evenly matched when we saw the match in AEW Dark eight nights ago but now this is the big leagues right here. This is dynamite. This is main television. It's one thing to get a win on AEW Dark where there's a lot less viewers but to get one here in front of you know nearly a million people every week it's going to do wonders for the career of either of these men, depending on who comes out with the and win. And I need to go back to what Hangman Adam Page was saying. You know, he talking about his future last week with Renee, talking about how he wants to get back into the title picture. We've already got the AEW World Title scene with Bullet Club and John Moxley and their thing going on there. We'll see them two later tonight. But as far as uh, the mid card goes, oh, hang on a second, Orange Cassidy into a nice cover right there. Are we about to see the end of this match for Hangman Adam Page? No, a kick out at two and a half. Forget whatever I was saying. That was a very close uh, call right there. Orange Cassidy the almost scoring the upset victory. But yeah, as I was saying, when it comes to championships here in AEW, you know, for Hangman and Page, he was talking about wanting to win a title. That doesn't necessarily mean the world title. It could mean, you know, the tag team championships, perhaps, going after those vacant tag team championships after whoever wins them at Fight for the Fall and goes in and wins that ladder match. Maybe he teams up with someone and goes in and wins the tag title. Or maybe, alternatively, Hangman and Page sits his on the TNT championship when that finally comes into this uh, rendition of AEW. You never know. You truly never know what the future could hold here in AEW. That's what makes this thing so exciting because you never know who's going to win on any given night and you never know what's going to happen on any given night. That's dynamite. Now Orange Cassidy with a counter, another counter by Hangman and Page and Hangman and Page again picking up Orange Cassidy for that tornado TDT off the second now row. Hangman and Page taunting a little bit at the hands of Orange Cassidy. No love lost between these two newfound rivals here in AEW but again another counter by Orange Cassidy won with the swiftness and they hit to the good as well and now what is Orange Cassidy thinking? Hang on a second. He's got him hooked here. He's about to deliver something big nice maneuver there and now Orange Cassidy perhaps with the momentum in his corner here as he picks up Hangman and Page and delivers a blue thunderbomb a massive blue thunderbomb and now smartly bringing Hangman and Page into the center of the ring this is about to be it for the cowboy no never mind Orange Cassidy here looking to fly we've already seen him be one with the swiftness will he be one with the swiftness through the skies here at the hands of Hangman and Page no he doesn't connect with that maneuver he does not connect with the cross body and now Hangman and Page with a brutal DDT busting OC wide Open. And now here we go, the burning hammer by Hangman Adam Page. He connects flush with it. And that might be all she wrote for Orange Cassidy right here. He has not moved too much since delivering those moves. And Hangman Adam Page, that's vintage Page with his signature maneuver as he goes into the cover on Orange Cassidy. Referee down for the count. And that is all she wrote for Orange Cassidy on Dynamite. What a great opening match that was between two men who are looking to get back in the championship picture. But in the end, Hangman Adam Page gets the same result he did eight nights ago on Dark as he beats Orange Cassidy. It was that move right there, the Dude Buster by Hangman Adam Page that put Orange Cassidy away. And now you've got to imagine, fellas, Hangman Adam Page, I mean, you think about what he was saying a week ago to Renee. He is setting his sights on a championship, and whichever title it is, it is going to be some fierce competition with the wave of momentum that this man is now riding. Oh, and hang on a second now, look at this backstage, Brian Cage stomping the hell, stomping a mud hole in Darby Allen, and clearly these two men's rivalry is far from over. Brian Cage clearly not satisfied with the way that he lost to Darby Allen a week ago on Dynamite, and now he's out for revenge right here, out for blood at the hands of Darby Allen, and look at this now, oh my god, the machine with the strength, they're just slamming it down on concrete. There is no love lost between these two men right here, Brian Cage absolutely destroying Darby Allen in the backstage area here on Dynamite, 
right now. Oh my god, not on the concrete, not on the concrete. Oh my god. Darby, if you want so badly to ruin the career and the reputation of the machine, then it's only fair that we ruin yours. So next week, I'll fight for the fallen. You're gonna face the cage inside the cage. And we are gonna end this once and for all. What a start it has been to AW Dynamite thus far. We see Hangman Adam Page beat Orange Cassidy again. And we just found out that it'll be Brian Cage against Darby Allen inside the steel cage next week at Fight for the Fallen. But right now it is time for more AW Combine action in the quarterfinals. Trevor Rage against Jay White. And of course it was just a couple of weeks ago in the round of 16 when Trevor Rage beat Ray Ian to advance on an episode of AW Dark to advance this Dynamite right here and to the quarterfinals. But he's facing a man with a lot of experience and a lot of hype behind him in Jay White the Switchblade. Because it was even more recent than Trevor Rage's advancement in this tournament. It was at double or nothing when Jay White made his first AEW appearance to beat Carlito, another free agent who was in this tournament. He beat him in the round of 16 to advance here to the quarterfinals with a very, very good performance in that match against a wrestling legend, a wrestling veteran in Carlito. He honestly made it look easy. And of course, the move that you're going to watch out for if you're not familiar with Jay White in this matchup, it's that Blade Runner. Once you hit that Blade Runner, if you're Jay White, it is all she wrote for your opponent. It is, it's all said and done. But the question is, is Jay White about to feel the rage or will the Switchblade reign supreme once again? Here we go. And immediately off the bat, both these men going for big strikes, but Trevor Rage with a nice counter. And now a nice counter by the Switchblade himself here. And now, wait a second, he's about to go for something big. No, a counter there to the sidewalk slam by Trevor Rage with a nice knee to the face. And now Rage is about to make him feel the rage with a big maneuver right here. He's going for a power bomb, perhaps. Yes, he is. Nothing really uh, extravagant about it, but it connects and it's effective. And there's a leg drop as well. Nice little opening sequence here from Trevor Rage as he weakens down Jay White. And now Trevor Rage, oh, just slamming down the arm of Jay White straight into the mat right there and taunting as well. What a show out performance it was for Trevor Rage in the first round against Ray Ian. I mean, it was one of the shortest matches we've seen in AW Dark history. It was pretty quick. It was over. If you blinked, you would have missed it. That's how quick it was when he beat Ray Ian. And so Trevor Rage is definitely somebody you're not going to want to sleep on. And there's another reason why. Huge slam right there, sitting him down. But Jay White another counter a bit of a wrestling veteran in his own right but someone who has so much experience already and so much left to give and even if Jay White doesn't win this tournament what a wrestling career he's gonna have somewhere else in the professional wrestling world I mean the sky really is the limit for this guy and also speaking of the future of this tournament by the way the winner of this match will go on to face either Rob Van Dam or Leo Rush depending on who wins in that quarterfinal matchup at Fight for the Fallen and so what a matchup what a set of matchups that could potentially uh, create I mean we could see Jay White versus Leo Rush what a banger that would be. We could see Rob Van Dam uh, against Trevor Rage or Rob Van Dam against Jay White or etc etc. It could be a very interesting semi-final. And that's just the right side of the bracket. We've also got the left hand side of the bracket where we've got Tessa Blanchard against Zack Sabre Jr. which will be taking place uh, in a couple of weeks here on Dynamite and that's another semi-final matchup that I'm very excited to see. Both those, uh, the man and the woman, I was going to say both those men but uh, there is women in this tournament as well by the way Tessa Blanchard represented. But both of those competitors in that matchup have been showing up and showing out thus far and Trevor Rage has showed up and showing out so far nice impressive maneuver right there and I was gonna slam him down with a sit out power bomb as well this might be the year of the rage and yeah as I was saying about Tessa Blanchard and Zack Sabre Jr it has been a great performance thus far but Trevor Rage looks like he's, he's about to put away Tre oh my god a nice uh, maneuver right there the knee and the clothesline to Jay White and it's about to be it no a kick out at one not just yet Trevor Rage don't get ahead of yourself kid but let me tell you something it's a lot harder to talk about AW Combine and commentate over the action than it seems so I apologize if I'm messing up my words or messing up the moves in certain spots it's, uh, it's been quite a night so far in Dynamite I mean we've got the Cage and Darby Allen announcement we've had Hangman and Page building momentum and we've got much more to come as well but wait a second now Trevor Rage looking to put away Jay White again but another counter by the Switchblade there and now the Switchblade looking to turn the tide of this one nice DDT the Switchblade oh he says slip though it is game over for Trevor Rage perhaps looking for that Blade Runner now he's got him hooked for the 
Blade Runner, simple as that. Jay White connects with the Blade Runner, and that is gonna be all she wrote for Trevor Rays. No, a kick out at two and a half. And Jay White cannot believe it right now, but Jay White knows that he's gonna put away one of the very best in this tunnel right here in Trevor Rage, an up and comer in his own right. And now Jay White looking to fly through the skies as we've seen him do before. Nice elbow connect. Jay White though, he has tussled with the best of them in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And there's a DDT again. And now he's gonna lift him up for another move. Oh, nice counter by Trevor Rage again. Back and forth, these men go and Rage is feeling the rage. It looks like we're about to see a beast unleashed here in Trevor Rage. What a breakout tournament this could turn out to be for this young man. And now here we go. He's about to go for something big. There's the forearm in the corner, straight into the bulldog. What a nice little sequence that was from Trevor Rage. And now, oh, nicely done there as well. Straight into the cover here. Is this about to be it? Does he advance into the semi-finals of the combine? No, two and a half. Although I may have spoke too soon. Nice counter there by Jay White, hitting the back of the hamstrings right there. And again, another counter by Trevor Rage. And he's going to go for something big, slams him down. Now Rage has Jay White exactly where he wants him. He's going to go for something, perhaps a spinning neck breaker. We're about to see spins him around and delivers a beautiful neck breaker as well. And fellas, I think we're about to see the biggest upset in the tournament so far. Rage is about to put him away. No, again, another counter by Jay White. And an elbow straight to the face. And look at this young man. He is all fired up. A man in Trevor Rage who is just 21 years of age. Already so impressive in the professional wrestling business. And showing up here in this tournament. I'm sure Cody Rhodes is watching on the man who made this tournament. And he is very proud of what he's seeing in Trevor Rage right now. But with that being said, Jay White managing to get out of that Boston Crab right there. And go for a DDT. But the third time is not the charm. It does not connect. Look at this. Rage is all kinds of fire up looking to put away Jay White here and here we go he connects with it and he says it's all over look at that beautiful spinning power slam We've seen him win a match with that move before the tilt a world power slam and Jay White is done no another kick out conjoined twins close again and perhaps now Trevor Rage wondering what he has to do to win this tournament to win this match against Jay White now from the second rope oh he went for the splash but he got absolutely none of that and Trevor Rage looks like the wind was just taken out of him off of that maneuver right there and now Jay White with the Blade Runner. The Blade Runner connects on Trevor Rage and you don't kick out a two. Nobody has. And the Switchblade has advanced to the semis. What a hell of a performance from Trevor Rage and Jay White in that one. A fantastic match here on Dynamite. But in the end, Jay White is heading to the semi-finals. And what a tournament this could turn out to be for him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first bit of tag action in a little while here in AEW Dynamite. And what a match it is going to be. The Lucha Bros against SCU. And a little preview of the triple threat ladder match that we'll be seeing at Fight for the Fallen. Because of course that is right, in just one week's time at Fight for the Fallen, it will be SCU against the Lucha Bros, against the Young Bucks in a triple threat ladder match to determine who will be the new World Tag Team Champions here in AEW, of course, after the titles were vacated by the Jurassic Express due to injury. And I've got to say, by the way, as SCU make the red shirts, what a match that is going to be and what a team the Lucha Bros are. Of course, I don't even need to really speak them up. You know how good they are. And you know how good SCU is as well with Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels. They, know, they may not be spring chickens in the professional wrestling world anymore, but they are experienced veterans of this business. And that is definitely going to give them an advantage heading into next week's match. Well, now as SCU and the Lucha Bros get ready, Ref Aubrey rings the bell. And here we go with this Tornado Tag Team match right here on Dynamite. And yes, that is is right you are seeing this right you are hearing this right this is our first tornado tag match of the series so far i thought you know what why not mix it up you know like normal tag matches are great they can be a lot of fun and everything but uh there's something really fun and chaotic about a tornado tag match and i just enjoy it so here we are there's literally action going on at all times the match doesn't really slow down in a tornado tag match and that means that these teams have to kind of combat this in a different kind of way you're going to be watching your tag partner making sure they're not in danger and vice versa now frankie kazarian going up to that second rope right there going for the elbow doesn't quite connect on Pentagon Jr. Pentagon with the counter and now working down on the leg of Kazarian. What an in-ring career it has been for all of these men. And now they've got a chance to add some more gold to their resumes next week at Fight for the Fall. And of course with the Young Bucks probably watching on to get a little bit of a scouting mission going at the two uh, teams that will challenge them in that ladder match. Really that match next week, a ladder match, a triple threat with these teams for the titles. It has all the makings of being a match of the year contender. And I cannot wait to see it play out as 
now Pentagon Jr. You got Christopher Daniels going up to the top rope right there. Suplex to Kazarian, and Christopher Daniels is looking to fly with the moves so he connects with it. But then Pentagon Jr. coming in from behind and now picking up Christopher Daniels right here. But again, a counter by the Wiley Ringing veteran, and he takes him down with the elbow or excuse me with the shoulder barge. And a look at Kazarian as well, wrestling around Ray Phoenix. And, uh, fellas, it seems that Pentagon Jr. is executing some sort of Leviosa right here from Wizards of Waverly Place and maybe Harry Potter. This is an incredible move from Pentagon Jr. I mean, I can't believe what I'm seeing right here. Well, now Pentagon Jr. has got down from his place of worship up there in the sky and he's going to deliver a Northern Light suplex to Frankie Kazarian as Ray Phoenix is dumped to the outside by CD. And now Pentagon Jr. running into the corner with that big knee right there and just the stomp and a mud hole in Kazarian momentarily and he catches him with a knee as well. Nicely done as Christopher Daniels is dominating as a part of the SCU out there. Meanwhile in the ring, look at this. Oh, nice move there. The package, uh, the package pile driver right there from Pentagon Jr. going into the cover. One of the first ones in this matchup, but a kick out by Kazarian. And now Pentagon Jr. has Kazarian hooked for the DDT off the second rope. Straight back into the ring. Welcome back to reality, Frankie Kazarian. Now look at this. The Lucha Bros able to deliver tag team offense on the SCU as they dominate here in this match. Both members are down, or at least they were momentarily. And look at this, the offense. Oh, but Christopher Daniels with the clothesline. And now Frankie Kazarian going after Ray Phoenix looking to fly through the skies while Pentagon and Christopher Daniels go at it. But look at Kazarian on the right hand side of the screen, but he doesn't connect with it. Ray Phoenix getting out of the way and Pentagon Jr. with a massive move over there. Into the cover, Aubrey Edwards counts the pin, but no, a kick out at two and a half by Christopher Daniels and he catches a throwback for his troubles, the blockbuster. Now going for another suplex is Pentagon Jr. Counter, neck breaker by Christopher Daniels. Meanwhile, I think Ray Phoenix just got dropped on the steel steps and Christopher Daniels is looking to put away Pentagon Jr. Here we go, but no, a counter there. He goes for the Enziguri or he goes for the Hurricane Runner, excuse me, it gets out of the way. These two men dodging each other's moves, wrestling back and forth. And another Irish whip counter as the SCU are in control of this matchup right now. Look at those jabs straight to the abdomen. And now Christopher Daniels has Pentagon Jr. up in a precarious position. Ray Phoenix better help him out if he realizes he doesn't. And now Christopher Daniels from the top rope with the superplex to the middle of the ring. Now Pentagon Jr. with a counter. Fight of a champion, fight of a warrior right here from Pentagon, but he better help his brother out. Ray Phoenix is about to feel a little bit of a drop kick on the apron by Frankie Kazarian. Pitcher perfectly delivered. Now he goes to the cover on Ray Phoenix, but it's broken up by Pentagon Jr., who is about to help out his brother, Cierto Miedo. And there it is, the package pile driver. Oh, excuse me, Cerro Miedo there. Either way, Pentagon Jr. did the damn thing, and Frankie Kazarian, he's got his own heart right there, and you're gonna need it. Heading into that brutal ladder match in seven days. He survives the package pile driver because Pentagon Jr. wanted to put him away with one more move, and it gave him the window he needed to get out of that offense and counter. And now Frankie Kazarian is looking to put Pentagon away, but look at this, Ray Phoenix coming in clutch. Christopher Daniels on the other side of the ring now, going for something big, but it's countered again by Pentagon Jr. Goes for something, it's another counter, throws him up in the air and slams him down. And now Christopher Daniels is amazing that he can still fly at his age. It looks like he's about to fly, wait a second, Robert C, two moves at the same time, Moonsault, and it's countered by both Lucha Bros at the same time. And again, another counter by Christopher Daniels with the suplex water. What a back and forth tag match this is in this tornado style bit of action. And now look at this, Ray Phoenix looking to help out his brother again, paying him back, but oh, he's going for the Spanish fly, countered by Christopher Daniels and he takes him out. And look at this, now a dirty pin from Frankie Kazarian, but it's a kick out again as Christopher Daniel goes flying and there's a, a jumping clothesline or a jumping forearm. Frankie Kazarian went for the dirty pin there to help SCU win, but it did not quite pay off Pentagon Jr. kicking out. Again, another counter there by Frankie Kazarian and now lifting Pentagon Jr. up to the top rope again. We've seen him up there before with Christopher Daniels. The question is, can he counter this one or is he about to feel the same fate from an even higher spot via Frankie Kazarian? Look at this. From the skies, they fly with the superplex into the center. And now Frankie Kazarian, look at this. He's got the submission hold locked in or he's about to get it locked in on Pentagon Jr. But Ray Phoenix breaking up the submission and now going for a move of his own on Frankie Kazarian, slamming him down. But look at that. Christopher Daniels now has a submission locked in and Ray Phoenix needs to come in clutch here. He needs to help Pentagon Jr. out if they're going to win this tag match in the long run. And uh, there we go. He helps him out. Pentagon Jr. gets out of now it. Now look at this. The Lucha Bros are standing tall. Looking to finish this one off at the hands of the SCU. And what the hell are we about to see from Pentagon Jr. Slamming him down. And now Ray Phoenix here. Look at this. He slams him down with his own power bomb, Unique maneuver. Incredible bit of tag action there in this tornado match. And the Lucha Bros get the job done on Dynamite. What a win. A great win there over the SCU. Helping the Lucha Bros. Pentagon and Phoenix 
build momentum heading into that triple threat ladder match next week for the titles at Fight for the Fallen. Are we looking at the next AEW World Tag Team Champions? So Nick and Matt, you just witnessed a huge win from a team who will be contending in the three-way ladder match next week at Fight for the Fallen for the vacant AEW World Tag Team Championships. But a question I wanted to ask you guys with the recent turning personality of Kenny Omega and the re-emergence of Bullet Club, whose side are you on? Well, that's a pretty easy answer, Renee. We were a part of the original rendition of the Bullet Club, and when we said Bullet Club was for, 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 for life, we weren't joking. And whilst we don't necessarily love what the G.O.D. did to the Jurassic Express because we wanted to take them titles from them firsthand, we all also can't really complain. I mean, the game is the game, and the game has been very good to us since we will be in that ladder match this time next week at Fight for the Fallen. Yeah, and not only will we be in that ladder match, but we also plan on winning the whole damn thing. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck, but I have one more question. You say that Bullet Club is for life, so does that confirm that you guys are officially a part of this new rendition of the club? Listen, Renee, we're not going to give everything away in one of your little interviews. You're getting the same answer as everyone else as far as that is concerned. You'll just have to wait and see. Well, those are some very interesting comments via the Young Bucks there in that interview with Renee Paquette. But the show must go on. We cannot spend too long thinking about what the Young Bucks just said because here comes John Moxley. And for John Moxley, he is just seven days away from what he says is going to be Omega's finale because he has an Iron Man match for the AEW World Championship, a 30-minute Iron Man match against Kenny Omega in the main event at Fight for the Fallen. And with the previous wars that those two men have engaged in, it is going to be an absolute banger, no doubt about and it. With that being said, I'm sure Moxley is thinking about what the Young Bucks just said and the ever-growing Bullet Club. But right now, tonight, he's got a one-on-one -on -one match against Tamatanga, one half of the G as he looks to build momentum to next week's world title match at Fight for the Fallen against Kenny Omega. Speaking of the aforementioned, here comes Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, Kenny Omega, the new Bullet Club. As the lyrics go, ain't nobody realer than Gorilla. And I mean, in recent events, you look at the events of last week on Dana, where G.O.D. took out Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy and made them vacate those World Tag Team Championships. Of course, the Jurassic Express no longer with us here in AEW. They're on the injury list, uh, I should say. That makes it sound way more morbid than it needs to be. But really, with the way G.O.D. are going, it is kind of morbid. I mean, seriously, they're going out taking motherfuckers out here. They're taking them out back pulling the bullet in their head, no pun intended, and they are just running roughshod over AEW the way they said they would. But with that being said, they are facing a different beast in this version of John Moxley, who has no love loss for the G.O.D., Tamatanga Tangaloa, or Kenny Omega. He's starting off hot in this one with those wicked fists after that cross body, and he's going to go straight after Tamatanga, but Tamatanga with a counter. A hell of a singles competitor in his own right, but not quite John Moxley. If there's one man that the G.O.D. haven't quite been able to stop, it is Moxley, a one-man wrecking crew, a one-man army in recent weeks. Moxley, of course, returned for the first time since Double or Nothing just seven days ago, and essentially saying, hey, Omega, I'm coming for my rematch clause in the Iron Man match. I'll fight for the Fallen and I'm going to whip your ass. And then, of course, what's the expression? He, he sick the G.O.D. like a pack of dogs on Mox last week. But, of course, Moxley with two paradigm shifts taken out. Both members of G.O.D. saying, hey, your henchmen don't scare me. I'll take a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members of Bullet Club. I don't care how many there is. I'm coming for you and I'm coming for my title. And you got to respect the hell out of Moxley for that. But now, look at this. Tamatanga's up at the top rope here. That's Moxley where he wants him. And there's the bastard. And superplex in the center of the ring. Abby goes into the first cover of this matchup. Rep Aubrey counting it, but a kick out by Moxley at one. And now Tamatanga spinning him around and slamming him straight into that steel ring post right there. And the knee as well, insult to injury. You've got to remember, by the way, in that world title Iron Man match at Fight for the Fall in just seven days, it's going to be Moxley against Omega. But even if GOD decide to come out there and screw over Moxley or try to do any funny business, it could lead to a DQ and Omega could easily lose himself a point to Moxley. And that is definitely not what the champion wants because it's an Iron Man match. You don't want to be giving up easy points in the early going or especially late on in the and match. And now hang on a second, right in front of Kenny Omega. He has Tomatonga exactly where he wants him for the apron DDT. Holy mother of God, what an apron DDT. And if anyone has never told you before, yes, that is the hardest part of the ring. And he just slammed a man's head straight down upon it. That's what Moxley's on tonight, if it wasn't clear. He is out for smoke. Now again, Bulldog on the floor as he does this right in front of the AW World Champion who cannot do anything about 
about it right now. Now look at this Moxley staring down Kenny Omega, the man he will face in seven days for the World Championship. But now Moxley getting back in the ring and going back after Tamatanga. But he might have given him a bit of breathing room right there. And there's the cutter. To take a page out of another book of a man that uses that move out of nowhere. But a kick out by Moxley. He got caught off guard, but he manages to recover it. Now Tamatanga, oh, nice counter there by Moxley with a super kick straight to the gut. And now Moxley here, what's he thinking? Oh, nicely done right there. I guess he could say that was a bit of a dirty deed by Moxley. And now he is hulking up. He is feeling it here on Dynamite. Right. He delivers a forearm right there, jumping off the second rope. This is Moxley to a T. And here's the Bulldog as well. And now Moxley has him caught. Oh, wait a second. He'll go for that Fisherman suplex, but it was countered by Tama Tonga. And now Tonga has him up here again, looking for. Oh, nicely done. A flapjack. And Moxley perhaps wondering where he is as Tama Tonga is looking to fly from the skies. But no, Moxley had it scouted. He saw it coming in his peripheral vision. And now he's about to deliver that big boot straight to Tama Tonga. Now he goes straight to the cover here on Tonga. It's about to be it. No, a kick out again at two and a half. Now just stomping a mud hole right here in Tama Tonga. No love lost. And here we go again, raining down the strikes. That's John Moxley, baby. And Moxley is in a pissed off mood. We heard him say it a week ago. And it is clear as ever in this match. But Tama Tonga looking to represent the club. Looking to do what is best for the club. Another cutter. Another cutter delivered to Moxley. And that's gonna be all she wrote. Huge upset. No. A kick out again by Mox. Unbelievable scenes here on AEW Dynamite in what is one of our main events. Our main event match we'll see uh, Hikaru Shida and Awesome Kong in our next segment. Because of course in our main event it'll be an episode of The Waiting Room with Britt Baker, DMD and Awesome Kong and Hikaru Shida, the AEW Women's Champion, will be the guest and that's sure to be an explosive confrontation between those women. But right now Tama Tonga is on the verge of scoring a huge upset seven days away from one of Moxley's biggest matches in his career if he can continue what he's doing right now. Both these men up at the top rope. We are about to see, ladies and gentlemen, another superplex. And Moxley needs to get a counter off right now. He needs to turn the tide of this matchup, and he delivers a reverse DDT. And now Moxley going for the Irish. Wait a second, a counter by Tamatanga. Nice forearm there, but wait a second. Moxley bouncing back off the ropes with a clothesline. We've seen that before. Just like that, Moxley turns the tide of the matchup. But look at Tanga Loa trying to cost him the matchup. But Moxley doesn't give a damn. He had his sights set on one man paradigm shift. The paradigm shift connects to Tamatanga. And that is all she wrote. Moxley gets the job done against one half of the GOD. But in seven days, that fight for the form it'll be for the World Championship in an Iron Man match. And Kenny Omega, Moxley, is coming. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our main event segment here on AW Dynamite. Another rendition of The Waiting Room with Britt Baker, DMD, featuring the two women who will fight for the AW Women's World Championship next week at Fight for the Fallen. And if I know anything about the dentist, she is going to stir the pot between Hikaru Shida and Awesome Kong on another episode of her show, The Waiting Room. And I cannot wait to see it, quite frankly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Wrestling's Greatest Talk Show with me, Britt Baker DMD. Oh, how I have missed your love and support, but right now it is not about you morons. It's about next week at Fight for the Fallen, where my two guests will fight in a huge clash for the AEW Women's Championship. A match, by the way, that I really should be involved in if you think about it. I mean, seriously, hear me out. I wasn't pinned or submitted at Double or Nothing. I should still get the one-on-one -on -one title match. I deserve, to be honest. There are eight million ways to die. Jesus. Oh, hold that sentence for a second, Britt Baker. You may have pissed off the wrong woman, the wrong beast, because here comes the ever-intimidating Awesome Kong. Shut up, Baker. No one gives a damn about what you want or what you deserve. But maybe when I become champion at Fight for the Fallen, I'll think about destroying you in a title match. Destroying me? You wish. You think you're so tough because you won a few matches against people I've already beaten. Well, you're not all that. And quite frankly, I could beat you with an arm behind my back. Oh my goodness me. This is not the woman you wanted to piss off, Britt Baker. DMD, I'll give you credit. You got lady balls. But now DMD is about to feel the wrath of the car. Buster taking down Britt Baker. Now Sheeta, it's about time you get your ass out here. Ask and you shall receive. Here comes the AW Women's Champion, Hikaru Shida. What a showdown this is gonna be. Well, 
Well, well, well, if it isn't the woman who only has seven days left as AEW Women's Champion, I hope you're getting those nerves out of your system now while you stand in my presence. I want there to be no excuses when I destroy you. I'm not scared of you. I never have been and I never will be. And next week at Fight for the Fallen, I'm going to be the one to ruin your mystique and your winning streak and continue to be AEW Women's Champion because the Sheeta you see when we face off isn't like the Sheeta of old. This is a new Akaru Sheeta, one who you insulted, one who you underrated, and one who is going to kick your ass.